To find information regarding the organization's fleet of aircraft, users can click on the Aircraft Status Board. From the Aircraft Status Board, we can search for all aircraft associated with this organization. Prominently displayed at the top of the Aircraft Status Board, we can see a, ser a current serviceability percentage. This percentage is only as good as its current date timestamp. The screen can be set to auto refresh or can be refreshed manually. One of the first columns we can see are the color coded aircraft icons. Each color represents a different status. In this example, green is a serviceable aircraft. Blue is unavailable due to scheduled maintenance. White is fully mission capable. And red is unavailable due to maintenance. We can also see other icons. The task icons will display a brief synopsis of any tasks that are overdue in the warning period or due. You also have the QA check column, which will display any warnings if items are missing off of an aircraft or if they don't have certain tasks associated with them. All the other columns are for information only, except for items that contain a hyperlink. Items that contain a hyperlink, such as the open work order, open work package, will take the user out of the aircraft status board and send them to the appropriate inquiry screen. In this example, we clicked on open work orders, which takes us to the work order inquiry screen. From the aircraft status board, we can see the aircraft configuration. This first aircraft, MHS-03, is set up in an anti-surface warfare configuration. This one is set up for search and rescue. Now, the columns that are displayed now are not the only columns that are available. This screen is fully customizable. By clicking on the drop-down arrow and going to the columns, users are presented a list of columns that they can add or remove based on their needs. So for example, if I wanted to add the tail number, I can click on this box here and we can see that the tail number column has been added. And if I'd like to remove it, I can remove it this way. This screen is highly configurable. Users can move columns around to best suit their needs. If I wanted my location at the front of the screen, I can simply drag and drop it at the front of the screen. I can also group by different items, such as group the information by the serial. You can also sort the columns easily by clicking on them, and it will sort them either ascending or descending. From the aircraft status board, we can also click on the status summary tab, which gives us a breakdown of every status available and its percentage. So we can see that we have 18% fully mission capable, serviceable, 45%, and then our different unserviceable statuses for a total of 100%. If we go back to our aircraft status board, we can make our way down to the bottom of the screen and click on Structure Viewer. From here, this brings up the physical structure of the aircraft, and we can see all the parts that are installed on this aircraft and how this physical structure is built. From the screen, we can also click on the icon. So if I click on the icon for serial number CH004, this brings us to the item maintenance screen. This is the main record for this particular aircraft. Now from this screen, we're able to adjust the readiness date. For example, this one is serviceable. I'd like to change it to full mission capable. And as you can see, as I change the readiness date, you'll notice that the date timestamp in the as of section also changes. So I'll change it to serviceable now. Click on save. And you can see that now it's a few seconds later. I can also change a secondary role and other information. But once again, the information that I'm able to change from this screen is determined by your business practices and your business rules. When I come over to the side, I can also come down to the related link section. And from here, I can open up the task schedule link, which shows me any task associated with this aircraft. This one currently displays its flight hours. And here I can see life used. So this aircraft shows it has 5,673 light hours. I can close this screen. And from the item maintenance screen, I'm also able to create work orders against this particular aircraft. Now I'll make my way back to the aircraft status board. One of the other useful features from the aircraft status board is the ability to click on the task icon. Now you can see here that we have three overdue tasks against this particular aircraft, MHS-04. So I will click on the icon and this brings us to our maintenance planning screen. This is a screen that your maintenance planners would use to take care of any scheduled maintenance against this particular aircraft. 
In order to conduct scheduled maintenance, we use the maintenance planning screen by simply clicking on the particular task we'd like to complete. We can go down to the bottom and click on create work package. We can quickly give it a description and click on save. This is the work package. This is a container that holds the work orders that will be associated with this particular 14 day task. All I have to do now is just select the task, click lock in, and now we can see that there is a work order generated to conduct a 14 day task against this particular aircraft. I can close the screen and if I refresh this maintenance planning screen, we can see that this 14 day task is no longer available to be selected and we can also see that a work package and a work order have been created against it. That still leaves these other two tasks in a planning phase. Once again, I can close out maintenance planning screen. The aircraft status board is used to display aircraft. If you would like similar functions, in order to track other pieces of equipment, such as support equipment or other parts, we can visit the equipment status board. The equipment status board is located in material and we can go ahead and click on equipment status board. So the equipment status board is used to show other parts and equipment that are not aircraft in a similar manner as the aircraft status board. In this example, I will search in set code SP2. These are all the parts located in this particular set code. Once again, we have color coded icons to let us know what the status of the particular parts are. And in here, the green icons designates serviceable items, the red designates other than serviceable, and the gray INS are the parts that are installed on other pieces of equipment. So for example, if we look at this engine 123, if we go down towards the end of the columns, we can see that this engine is installed on top serial number H002. Now, very similar to the aircraft status board, we have our icons, we also have our hyperlinks. So any work orders that are written against these particular parts can be reached by clicking on the icon and that will take you to the work order inquiry screen. And the same functionality that we had with our other status board, we can add and remove columns. We can move columns around. All those functions are still available within the equipment status board. You also have a status summary, which shows the total number of parts installed other than serviceable or serviceable and its percentage. Now, if we would like to go into a particular part, we can simply click on the icon and much like the item maintenance for the aircraft, we have an item maintenance for our parts. Now, some of the information is different, but the functionality is very much the same. And from here, we can see the different links that are available under the logbook section. And if we go down to our related links, we can go in and also see other links. And the structure viewer is also available for these particular parts. So if you had a component that was made up of various subcomponents, they would appear here. Now I can close my structure maintenance screen. Now that I'm back at the equipment status board, if I go into engine one, two, three, I can click on the icon. And if I would like to know the life used against this particular engine, I can go ahead and click on related links and then click on the master lives link. And here I can see that this engine is tracked by engine starts and it has 785 engine starts against it. We can also use the equipment status board to see a history of where our component has been. For example, if we went into engine E004, I can go ahead and click on the OTS icon. And from the item maintenance screen, I can go down to the related links and click on the install and remove history. And this will show me where this part has been removed and installed. So here we see our history. We've only had two transactions against it, but we can go ahead and look and we have our dates. And as we've seen on other screens, all these columns, we have more columns available if we need them and the information can be moved around as required. Also from these screens, when you see the export to Excel icon, you can click that and this will send this particular information over to an Excel spreadsheet.